You're joining us for Leadership Conversations with Neil Jurd. Come join us where we'll explore how you can grow from technical experts to inspiring strategists with host Neil Jurd. Welcome to Leadership Conversations with Neil Jurd. I'm Leanne Scott, guest host, and I'm going to be talking to Neil Jurd, the man himself today, helping you get to know the man behind the, little, the name a little better. Welcome, Neil. Hi, Leanne. Um, so we are about ready to head into lockdown number two. Um, and from lots of our discussions, I know that you use the time with lockdown number one um, mm. quite well. It was obviously a big shock to everybody. And I think for you, especially um, with all your face-to-face -face trainings and consulting um, coming to a speeding halt. Um, so tell us a little bit how you used your time during lockdown. Um, yeah, lockdown one was uh, started off as a bit of a disaster because I lost so much work. All of my face to face work just disappeared, um, which is a lot of what I was doing previously. But I, actually, I used it very well. After a couple of weeks, I, I, I understood the way things were going and um, I started writing. I had this idea. I've had this idea for years, but I've never had time to act on it, which was to make a series of videos that explain leadership because a, a, a lot of what I uh, what I do uh, I, I I do with groups face to face and of course there's only one of me so I can only I, I guess my reach is slightly limited so I thought if I can record these on on videos if I can make leadership simple and uh, team development simple which it is uh, people all over the world can access these ideas so 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 I started writing um and the task became huge I mean I spent months writing these things and there are now 30 videos about leadership or team development um they're about eight minutes long on average and they capture everything so so I used lockdown to write those obviously I couldn't do any more I couldn't get onto the recording stage so 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 then when I found that I had more time left uh i started writing again and i've created a, a book that captures uh similar ideas it's slightly different but again captures my thoughts on leadership and and team development um and, and then as a spin-off i started picking up other work that to be delivered after lockdown i don't quite know why but i i um, so I picked up some some wonderful clients. So I used the end of lockdown to design some leadership courses for, for one of them. Um, so, yeah, I had a very productive lockdown and the weather was fantastic. Uh, my children everyone. Home. Yeah, I mean, it was great. It was actually for me, it was a really productive time and it cleared the space for me to do some projects I, I could never have done. Otherwise, I would never have found time. I don't think it broke my routine. It was it was a great lesson, actually. I think um, for most people, myself included, um, exactly what you're saying there, where, where time kind of stood still and it, it cleared the desks to do some of these bigger things and allow quite a pivot. So for you, mm -hmm. um, this is a big pivot, yeah. although may, maybe I would say enhancing more of what you do and, and allowing you to, to deliver it in, in a more productive way. So if memory serves me correct, you were in, the log in logistics in uh, the army, in the military. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and you, you mentioned something right at the start there um, about you saw what thing, how things were going and you kind of got yourself organized. Do you think that your military career helped you uh, prepare you to pivot in a, in a better, more productive way than maybe some people took three months or two months to actually realize that they needed to do something? I, I, I don't know. I never, the word pivot, I hadn't heard of until... Uh, probably about a month ago where people told me that I pivoted so I didn't consciously pivot because I I didn't know what it meant um, yeah I think I I I don't know whether the military taught me it but I but certainly the idea of um, reinforcing failure I mean if something's not not working yeah, I, I, I know that I need to change my approach and it was really clear six months ago or seven months ago that just hoping that the sort of work I used to do just came back uh, 
wasn't going to work. The, the people's budgets have been cut. A lot of organisations are, are not sure whether they're going to survive. Um, so I knew the world had changed. So no, but I, I think I've, I'm quite a realist and I could just, I had a sense that I needed to do something. Um, I, I don't think you need to have been a, a soldier to, to see that the world's changing fast and we, we need to adapt. I, I don't think that came from the army for, for, for me particularly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think everybody, we all hope that things are looking better. And this week obviously shows that um, we're back in lockdown and this could be an ongoing scenario. So I think, I mean, I'm really impressed with the way you've pulled, pulled it together. Um, and I wondered, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about the content of the training. So from what I understand, it is um, multiple, a number of modules with individual lessons underneath. Um, is it the same content as you would deliver face-to-face -face, or is it, in a, is it different? How, how would you describe the content? I think there's, there's more of it. Leanne. I mean, there's, there's 30 sessions, so uh, it can be paced over months or a year. Um, so, so far more than I could normally put into a, a two day course or a three day course. Um, and the content is everything, which I would say, I would say if you knew, if you watched every one of the videos uh, and you applied the theory, then you would know everything that you needed to know to be an effective leader and to grow a, uh, a high performing team. And the, the beauty of them, <laughs> one, of, one of the beauties, but one of the things that's really effective about them is that I can, I, I can explain things as I, as I normally would, but the graphics are, are fantastic. Um, I've been helped by uh, Vanessa Dawkins, who does, who does graphics for me and she's done um, really, really beautiful, simple graphics, which appear while I'm, I'm speaking. So it, it could actually be that these are better than the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't talk yourself out of a job. <laughs> no, but they are, they are very good. And of course, there is, I, I was disciplined to have them down to about eight minutes. So um, they're very simple. There's, there's, there's no, there's no, excess to them there's no padding it's, it's it's eight minutes of absolute focus on on the issue and then of course people can get together in in groups or have a facilitated discussion or just go off and reflect go for a walk but um they've got eight minutes of me and then as long as they want to interpret it and, uh, and apply it and if I remember correctly, you've um, at the end of each each video, there is a little bit of um, supporting text and then you have actually suggested a task at the end. So, for instance, reflect on this, th think about how it uh, works for your team. Um, so, so that yeah. kind of allows that um, structure, doesn't it? Yeah, there's, a, there's a, um, a sort of a coaching style question or reflection at the end i think i think of everyone or nearly everyone um but i wouldn't want people to be limited to that that's more to get them started i, I, yeah. I envisage people having team discussions around it and i know that's going on already actually because they've been the videos have been on the market for a month now and uh, i'm having really good feedback from people that are using them and i know a team at Shef sheffield university who who've had them for a few weeks now uh, I heard yesterday that the senior team have watched them and they're reconvening um, next week to have a discussion about how that applies to them. So the videos are being used exactly how I hoped they would. Brilliant. Brilliant. That's really good news. Um, so I'm just wondering, as you're talking about teams there, um, you know, sometimes you were, I've worked in teams where we kind of really gel um, as a team. And then there's other times where you're working with people who have quite a different opinion and it feels like we're all pulling apart. Do you think that um, it is a case of teams just work together, they either gel or they don't, or is it a leadership issue? What would you say um, about bringing teams together? I, th I think there's one, uh, and this will come out if, I mean, anyone who watches the videos or uh, reads the book will get this, but for me, teams are, 
uh, are pulled together by what I describe as clear and compelling purpose. If everybody is excited by and believes in that same purpose, um, you tend to get teams that work well. Teams naturally, if, they, if they're left untouched, uh, they tend to be a bit stagnant. Um, and, and you'll find that you, you'll often, probably most teams in the world are um, quite bureaucratic, hierarchical. Uh, they find it slow to make decisions. People are not particularly honest with each other. Um, feelings are hidden. Um, and, that, and that's normal. And what you want, of course, in a team is for it to be vibrant and creative, um, very much focused on purpose, lots of honest communications moving it from one end of that spectrum from where most teams are to what most teams want to be purpose is a huge part of that and yes as, as you said le leadership good leadership engaging with people and getting them connected to the purpose um, is really important so would you start by coaching the the leaders first or the leader first and separately and then bring the team in or do you do you start off um, with the team as a whole and to diagnose where the issues are? I, I think it's a good idea if the, if the leader's heavily bought in. So, so usually in my experience, I've worked with the leader first and because um, a lot of people don't understand or don't, don't even probably understand that there is a difference between managing and leading. So a lot mm -hmm. of organisations are run by people who are just the best practitioner or they're really good at process. They're really good at filling in the right forms or um, understanding the exact process that has to be followed. But of course, what you really need for an organization to be vibrant is, is leadership to, to give it direction and to, uh, to energize it. So for me, working on leadership with the leaders is really important. Um, so the, the way certainly when I've been working previously, my work normally starts with the senior person uh, and then one, after two or three sessions, we normally do some some work with the team. And do you think leadership is a kind of a nature versus nurture or nurture versus nature? Or are we just naturally born good leaders? No, um, I think anybody can learn learn leadership. I've, I've seen I've, I've run large leadership courses over the years for, say, the last 10 years. And then, of course, Back in the army, I, I taught at Sandhurst for, for two years where we run officer training for the for the British Army. And I, I've seen people develop beyond recognition. I've, I've seen people come in not getting leadership, uh, just just thinking in directive terms. I'm in charge. You must do as I say. And, and evolving and really understanding that connecting with people and being clear where you're going is it. So, so I, I, I'm certain that anybody can develop their leadership. Some, some people might have a, a, a better start point. Some people might be better disposed um, to leading. They might have a more natural inclination, but nobody should take that as an excuse. Everyone can get better. And uh, even if it doesn't come naturally, if you want to have a big effect in the world, you've got to lead. Le leadership multiplies your impact in the world. So if you've got good stuff that you want to get done, if you want to, to make the world a better place, and this sounds grand, but yes, it is. If you want to make the world a better place, you, you need to know how to lead. And it's, it's simple. I mean, this is my big premise, really, that leadership is simple. You, you, it's confused by most of the uh, the books you'll find on it. Yeah, there's this huge, if you look on Google, uh, if you go to the library, there's so much stuff on leadership that it's rather overwhelming, but it really doesn't need to be. It's really simple. Know where you're going, be good with people. If, 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 you've, if, you've, if you've got those two elements, you've pretty much cracked it. And then there's probably a few skills you can learn around the edges. So no, I'm, I'm, as you can tell, I'm really passionate at the idea that leadership simple it gets complicated that some of the rubbish you read on facebook 
these Facebook memes on leadership that add nothing to the, to the discussion. <laughs> it's, it's leadership's easy uh, and it's, um, it's an essential force. So would you say then it sounds, I mean, I love your excitement about leadership. It makes me want to change the world too. Um, would you say that your content is a bit different in that it offers that clear, simple path um, from yeah. maybe accidental leader to um, inspirational leader? Uh, I would say that. I think you just said it, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. I, I see it yeah. in simple terms. I, I speak fairly simply. I think I've got a, a limited vocabulary, so I tend to, to, to put things in fairly simple terms. Um, for, for me, leadership is simple and, uh, and presenting it in any other way just reduces the chances of people doing it. I've always felt on courses, um, you shouldn't teach more than people need to know. We tend to over teach and give people um, like a, a, a information overload. Here's everything we know. And yeah. of course, the result is most people are, are overwhelmed and they switch off. Much better to distill it to some simple principles that we can all get. You know, le leadership's it's, it's, it's like driving a car rather than flying an aeroplane. It's really quite simple. Um, so we should focus on that. We should make it simple and let people get on and um, and lead. And then once once they're leading, they can refine their technique. But really, anyone can lead. If you're if you're uh, a teacher in a school, if you're trying to set up a local charity, if you're a manager in a shop, whatever you do, you will do it better if you lead. I like that analogy. It, it works well. So if we think about kind of the world situation at the moment, um, it's feeling really complicated. And so we've got loads of teams really dispersed and working very independently and separately um, more than ever before. So do you think that kind of leadership training is still relevant today? Or do you think that people are, are working more autonomously? Um, what would you kind of, what advice do you have for leaders of today? I, I think leadership is more essential. Uh, I, I'm still coaching quite a few people and I have throughout the, uh, uh, through the pandemic, but I've been doing it via, via Zoom or Teams. Um, and I've seen people feeling quite isolated, uh, quite disconnected from purpose. I've attended quite a few team meetings where um, the disconnection that you can get through this form of connection is remarkable that the fact that you can't read other people's emotions you don't get that intrinsic feeling for where someone else is at and it's, it's strange because all their faces are there lined up on the yeah. screen but but you you don't really know what's going on you you don't you don't hear those subtle cues the noises people make when they disagree the leaning forward when they want to speak or the, the kind of the, the clues of distraction, the eyes darting around, all that gets missed. Yeah. Um, so to lead, so my, my um, definition of leadership uh, talks about engaging others intellectually and emotionally. So engaging others is a huge part of, of leadership, this connecting and engaging. And it's been made much harder to do. But we want people working towards that clear and compelling purpose. We need them focused and excited about that clear and compelling purpose. And as a leader, our job's to make that happen, to engage with them, to check in with them, um, to help them feel connected and, and, and engaged. Doing it through this medium is harder. So, so you need to work a bit harder and you need to refine it down to what leadership is. Showing people uh, lots of screen share presentations isn't going to motivate them. It's, it's, it's going to leave them feeling isolated. Um, just checking in with them once a week for a formalised conversation probably isn't enough. You know, all those corridor or water cooler or coffee machine conversations that you normally have at the workplace People value those. So, so really working to connect with people one-to-one, -one, having chats 
like like this, but just to stay connected, not not to give a task, just to stay connected, because connection is really, really important. Oh, absolutely. I, I've worked um, with a couple of clients and for me, you know, if the conversation starts and they don't go, good morning, how are you? Um, and I actually yeah, really yeah. want to know how you're doing, um, that, that leads long term to feeling really disconnected and undervalued. Mm. Um, yeah. and, and, and as much as I'm very aware of that, it, it still drives me nuts that people can't take a moment just to see how you're doing. And I think, like you're saying now, is more important than ever because people are so isolated. Um, and I suppose if you think only 7% of our communication is words, and at the moment we've lost the other 93%, so this yeah. becomes even more important. Yeah, that, that warmth of human connection is, is almost gone. This, this just isn't the same, is it? No, and it's, and it's being forced in every asset of our lives. You know, going shopping, stay two meters apart, and you almost mm. panic when people get too close. We're teaching kids not to uh, mix, not to mix year groups, not to stand um, close to each other, not to share anything. I think we're going to have a long recovery ahead of us um, once all this is over. So psychologically, because it's, in, it's been embedded in us to behave differently and to and to be less connected to each other, which of yeah. course is, is awful because that connection, that sense of community is, um, is essential to, to grow a, uh, a caring, better world. Co connection is, is everything. So if, we're, if we don't move back as soon as we can to being more connected with each other, um, I think that would be a, a huge shame. Yeah, I 100% agree. But let's move on to something a little more positive. Um, <laughs> I hear that you have some exciting news for Christmas and um, you have a new book coming out, one of your lockdown projects. Um, yes. Tell me a little bit more about your Christmas book. Uh, yeah, well, my Christmas book, and it, and it will be. I mean, it's a rush. Uh, this is uh, getting it from the writing stage a few months ago to... The, the almost ready to press the button stage has has been hard work um but the book so here is a uh, oh i love that. that that's the that's the cover of it no uh, nonsense um, leadership and team development yeah fantastic so that's 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 what the book's going to look like um and it's ex it's exactly what it says it's a straightforward really simple guide to leading and developing teams and again it can be um you could read it in one uh but but equally it's the sort of thing that you could have on your desk it's a kind of a desktop guide or a, a team reference where perhaps once a month the team gets together and thinks right what's next what are we what are we going to do this month uh, it's also oh, designed you. sorry go on. sorry Leanne. no i was gonna say that's a lovely idea actually it's a nice, yeah. nice focus development point for each month I like that yeah it would work really well for that um and I think I see it also it's it it makes great notes for clients of mine as well if I'm working with someone this is a far nicer way to give them a uh, some supporting notes than to give them a load of kind of old powerpoint handouts or whatever yeah that they're never going to look at <laughs> yeah yeah so, so it's so it's very readable the feedback on it is um uh, from everyone who's seen it, and I think you've you've seen it, haven't you? Have I shown I you have, the, yes. the, right, uh, the feed the feedback from everyone who's seen it is um, really really positive. People enjoy it because it's I've kept it simple. Yeah, I like that. Do you know roughly what's the how many pages to expect? I don't know. Uh, about one hundred, about one hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. Okay, yeah. and and so from what I understand, it's it's quite. It, or you just said as well, um, it's supporting notes. Would it follow um, along with the video course that you've got going? I, I would say if somebody had the video course, uh, buying the book would be a really good way of supporting them, the, the, the knowledge or cementing the knowledge. It's not essential because the video course comes with notes anyway. So as you watch mm -hmm. a video, uh, beneath the video, there are supporting notes for that. But if you're enjoying... Well, like I, I, I do. If I like, if I like an author, or if I like a, a speaker, 
I'll, I'll tend to get a lot of their stuff. This is, it's more of my stuff. There's some different content in there. There's some new ideas, uh, but there's a, a, a golden thread running through it, which is the importance of knowing where you're going and the importance of connecting with people. Uh, but probably, well, definitely a little bit more detail in some areas in the book, because there's a little bit more time in the book. Yeah, more time to think. Um, so we'll all be waiting for our autographed copies of that. Um, <laughs> yes. It seems to me that this could be um, quite, a, quite a good uh, corporate gift for Christmas for if leaders or managers want yeah. to uh, give it to their, their teams to read over the Christmas period and come back fighting, um, ready to take on the world. Um, do you offer any corporate discounts or bulk buy options? Yeah, I mean, if anyone was interested in buying a lot for their organisation, they, they just get in touch through my website, uh, neiljerd.com. And yeah, absolutely. I, I know a few companies are planning to do that already. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think it would be good for that. I think it would, it would be a nice gift. It wouldn't, it wouldn't spoil Christmas. I think it would actually be a really nice <laughs> gift. Well, no, because sometimes if you were given a, a, the wrong sort of book, and told yeah. to read it over Christmas, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be that special. But uh, but this is it's it's a lively book. It's got lovely graphics. It's got some some great case studies, um, and it's a a subject which yeah I think it is well approached over a break. And then as you say, you can come back into the work environment um, and and have an impact in January. You know we've got through nearly got through twenty twenty. I think we all agree it wasn't all it could have been was it but <laughs> yeah. so, so lovely to give people a bit of a, a lift as they as they go into 2021 yeah and hopefully some fresh ideas to start the new year I always love that time between Christmas and new year I'm um, always take the first week off to really get my head together and to put my goals mm. together and and kind of just refresh recharge I I do enjoy that um so what was I going to ask you um We've, you, you mentioned case studies, and I think leadership or, or some of the stories you've told me, you have some amazing transformations. Um, yeah. Can you share a transformation of, from a sort of uh, accidental leader to someone who's really turned things around and pivoted in their own way um, that, that you think you could share, that you'd be happy to share with us? Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I, that happens a lot with people when, because uh, like I say, it, leaderships, it is simple. Most people don't know it. So, so when you introduce people to something really simple that's so powerful, um, the effects are almost always transformational. And I, I guess I'm only interested in transformational because uh, anything less, anything functional, I just, it's, it's it feels like um, it's not embracing the power that's that's there to be had. So, um, yeah, for instance, I, 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 one particular client I've worked with for, for many years, who is the deputy head of a, a school, a, a large secondary school, um, and very much in the shadow of a particularly dominant head teacher whose style was, I think, robust is probably... <laughs> a, good, a good summary uh who drove the school and the school was very successful under under this this head uh but it was successful like a like a victorian warship successful <laughs> but not necessarily happy for the for the crew yeah. um and uh my my client through coaching um discovered various things but his own self-confidence um the importance of direction, the importance of vision, um, about taking time to connect with people um, and just developed a lot of self-confidence from that grounding and from understanding his leadership effect rather than his management effect. Because as a manager, you're just one person, you know, you're, 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 you're having to work really hard. And one person can work really hard. One person can probably do two or three people's work but when you start leading you're you're having the effect on tens or hundreds of people um and and as this guy started to 
to lead, P Peter his name is, as, as Peter started to lead, um, his impact across the organisation grew. And then uh, very young, he, he, he actually stepped up and became the head teacher, oh, wow. uh, became the head teacher of the school and has led it through a incredibly challenging two years. Uh, the, sc mm. the school's had some serious infrastructure problems, uh, not nothing to do with, with him at all, just the building that they've been given, um, which has led to some closures. And then, of course, coronavirus has, um, has made it a very, very uh, difficult environment for, for all teachers, but I think for school leaders particularly, really stressful. Mm. But Peter's leadership through this has been phenomenal actually he's been he's been recognized in the local community he's won an award for his leadership wow. uh, morale in the school amongst the teachers is really high despite what they're going through mm. uh, and it's his leadership he he took over was very clear about the vision he gave he gave a very clear and compelling vision for the school he talked about giving pupils in his school an unfair advantage he came up with that and I love it because it's it's the area that this school is in. There's no unfair advantage. This is an inner city school, and those children don't have much advantage when they come to to him. Uh, and this ethos of giving them more drives the staff. They're excited by this I concept. Love that. So, so so there's a guy that's um, embraced the idea of developing leadership, ha has worked really hard to to do so to to embody the lessons. And is now having a phenomenal leadership effect on the school that, that he leads and on the staff that he leads. And of course, ultimately, on the young people whose life chances are raised because of his leadership. So for me, kind of what really sums that up is the difference between management and leadership is yeah. to get that we can do more by empowering, by, by the leader empowering everyone around them having a clear direction and leading everyone together, yeah. we, you just achieve more, get an energy of its own. Um, I really mm. love that. That sounds fantastic. Yeah. And I think as a parent, that's what every parent hopes their school will give their children, um, which is yeah. why it's such a contentious uh, issue, choosing the right school. It's, it's an ambitious, I mean, it's the same in all organisations. If, you, if, you, if you've got something that's, but for your purpose to un unite you, to pull people together and energize them, it's got to be good. <laughs> and, yeah. and people seem to be scared of, of that, of the idea of, of having something really compelling that they're working towards. It's like, it's like they, they hesitate to define it. But when you do define it, it's really powerful. It pulls people in. The energy of working towards something that feels worthwhile and vibrant um, it's huge. It's the biggest thing, actually. If, it's, if, it's a, if you go into a turgid organisation, getting the vision right will have a huge effect before you do anything else. I suppose, uh, being in marketing myself, where, where you all go in, you know, do the vision and the mission statement and the this um, and the values yeah. and all that, it actually has to be more... Um, has to have more life to it more meaning mm, rather yeah. than just some words on the the screen that or on the wall that somebody has come up with so somebody i know uses the phrase um lived not laminated and of course if you if you uh, take a management approach to vision then vision is just fill in this box here fill in your vision in 20 words you you, you need to have an objective you and, and you can take all of the passion and the energy and the emotional connection out of it. If, if you if you try to make it too formulaic, the vision has to genuinely be something that excites you enough that you're going to want to work towards it day after day, year after year. And and that's got to be good because otherwise you're just going through the motions of life, of working, of purpose. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very very against actually. When you get stuff on walls, it's often quite interesting to to just ask people go, what's what's on the wall out there mm. and they won't know and it could be it could be their their company values what are your company values and they'll be all over the place what are your company values uh don't know. <laughs> and, they, and they won't they, they won't so 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 it hasn't made the 
the move from something that they should do to something that they passionately uh, believe in and are inspired by. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that could take us off on a whole other tangent as well. Um, but I think as a kind of a last thought, what advice, what number one piece of advice do you think you could give to leaders um, as we enter the final, oh, hopefully, hopefully final, but this next lockdown um, in terms of leading their teams and keeping them positive and moving forward? I've got, uh, well, um, the, the purpose thing, which I've mentioned a couple of times, but it's so important, make sure that you're really clear what you're trying to achieve. And then make sure that your team are, are clear because that saves an awful lot of herding and it allows people to to feel connected if they're connected to that purpose even if they're sat at home day after day week after week they they will feel part of something bigger and it's really important for for people to feel part of something recognized and connected and engaged in something worthwhile you know we, we a life without any worthwhile purpose would be um depressing and, oh. and it's, for, it's for all of us to either create that purpose or to help others find that purpose as as leaders um and then work work hard at leading um as well as whatever it is your your day job is work hard at leading because as a leader, your your role in the team is is to lead. You're a member of the team. I talk about leading from within the team. You're a team member. You're not you're not the leader because you're better than. You don't lead from above. You, you to me, leadership is just a role in the team. Um, so be good at what you do. Be good at leading. Study leading. Um, I, I, it's a it's a, a a clumsy plug, but by my by my book or or. By other, by other, but, but study leadership um, and then work to get around people, work to look after people, work to check in with people. Leadership for me is, is very caring. It's, very, it's, it's personal connections, caring, nurturing, looking after people, bringing them with you are essential and they take time. So do, give it that time. Take, take that time. Get, get around people and connect with them always and make it genuine it's not it's not a, a tick box yes i spoke to um charlene a tick it's, it's actually how is she what's going mm -hmm. on with with her home life what's going on with all the things which affect the whole person you, you connect with them connect with them make them make them feel recognized and make it genuine it's not it's not the act of leading it's 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 being a leader embodying leadership it's beautiful if you get it right it's so powerful and you can make so much happen as a leader you don't have to motivate people with pay or transactional things so it, really great leadership you see it in in the voluntary sector I, I've, I've, I've i've always been fascinated by leadership in the voluntary sector because it's all about purpose Pe mm -hmm. people are working because they've chosen to work they're giving their time uh because they want to and that's a really raw form of leadership. And where if you get it right, they'll stick with you for years. If you get it wrong, yeah. they'll vote with their feet. You, you suddenly you you haven't got any volunteers. Yeah, I think that what do they say? People really leave a job because of pay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's always the boss, isn't it? So it's, I think that's given as the as the the main thing that drives people out is a, is a poor relationship with their boss. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of us who'd love to get a copy of your book, where do we get it? Have you, have you heard of Amazon? Oh, I may have heard it, of Amazon. Yeah, it will be, it will be on Amazon. <laughs> it will be on Amazon. It will be on Amazon from um, uh, around the 10th of December, a, cu a couple of weeks before Christmas, it will be available on. Wonderful, wonderful. I can't wait to let everybody know when that is. And for those um, who want to take it a step further, where can we find your uh, leadership videos? Of course. Uh, Neil Neiljurd.com, N-E-I-L-J-U-R-D.com. And uh, if you go onto the website, you'll find some, uh, the very good website, you'll find some um, uh, demo videos. There are two demonstration videos, which are part of the um, 
uh, the series, but will give also give you a very clear taster of the way that I present and, and what you get. Uh, and, and then you can buy in uh, through that if you, if you want right. to buy a membership or if you're looking at corporate membership, then you can contact us and um, we can discuss that. Wonderful. Wonderful. I look forward to uh, getting the book. Um, thank you, Neil. That has been absolutely brilliant. It's been such a pleasure to introduce you as your guest host today. Um, and I look forward to handing the reins over to you and to hear more leadership conversations with Neil Judd. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leah. That's been lovely. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to a leadership conversation with Neil Judd. If you want to grow from technical expert to inspiring strategist, be sure to check out Leadership Lessons on neiljurd.com.